Hi hey guys, welcome back to another video of Work From Home, episode 3. Uh, so yeah, today, as usual, working from home, checking out the uh, Facebook Blueprint course. Uh, I'm actually going through a couple of more now. Um, so these ones I've already done. Uh, kind of useful. And then there are some new ones that I would want to go through them today. So it would just be a quick session. Uh, we'll go through maybe a couple of them, uh, well, four to five of them, and then let's we'll just say two sessions. So complete this one, uh, the hypothesis, and recommend measurement solutions, and we'll call it a day. So yeah, uh, let's continue. Um, a cross-channel measurement approach. Yeah, so yeah, guys, I'm in the kitchen today. Um, lighting's good. So, just need to plug into a battery very soon. Tell you what, let's plug in the battery first before we continue and start the course. Cool. Yeah, battery's in place. So, let's crack on. Today's landscape, uh, how we measure the impacts of advertising continues to evolve. Not only do people use, use more devices and screens to view ads, they also view second screens while they watch TV. This multi-screening behavior further uh, fragments attentions and warrants the new strategy for measuring the effectiveness of ad spend. Okay. Then and now, tradition of ads measure approach to these channels as Steost. Uh, which often leads myths inside on how channels work together to drive business outcomes. At Facebook, we're exploring how channel, cross-channel measurement solutions, display media performance more realistically than solo panels, focus on how to combine the unique strength of each channel to achieve business gold. We found that in running TV and Facebook, how TV, Facebook, email and other channels work together is a relatively new area of study and focus area for advertisers and analysts. Facebook is uniquely positioned to measure cross-channel effectiveness and help teams decide how to allocate marketing budget across channels. For example, Facebook offers a custom lift solution to measure the incremental impact of how Facebook and TV work independently or when paired together. Why is cross-channel measurement approached more accurate than a CL uh, measurement approached? Uh, just to it accounts for race of second screen use. What happens when you measure the performance of our ten channels in CLs? Uh, spend more effectively insights are more often dis duplicated. Uh, insights are lost. Yes. So that's quite a nice and easy one. Uh, why is it not showing? Yeah, actually, we need to click that again so it shows that it's done. Okay, so. Matrix across media. Discuss how matrix vary by channels. Also, when you adopt a cross channel measurement approach, it's important to be familiar with the key matrix associated with each channel. As you begin to explore the matrix include in this lesson, you will note that some matrix share the same name across channels. However, there are subtle differences in how they de defined. This is not included in our location. Okay, as sure you popular times in media, this is since since ninety four, similar to radio. I think this this is more how you know it tells you about the history of advertising and you know kind of channels and where they um incorporate so pay searched 
I see myself the back of your vision engine. Yeah, so this is kind of what you would see on uh, pay advertising. Yeah, okay. Direct mail is sent to customer address through bulk mail. It's a popular traditional direct mail channels. Savage sign to read more about rich frequency conversion rate. Okay, audiences for email marketing are based on a source list with additional target filter applied by the advertiser. Email marketing is typically used to re-engage the journey. is described okay so number of times of email sent to the percentage of people who opens and so that's the click through how many people received so that's rich frequency and conversion rate cool knowledge check uh, now that you've reviewed the key matrix and used the cross media, take a moment to complete this exercise. Use the drop down menus to choose the channel that corresponds with each matrix. Uh, mobile apps install. What is it? Use the drop down menus to choose the channel that corresponds with each matrix. Uh, da, 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 da. mobile apps in store. That's Facebook, GRP, uh, click per. Not sure this is that, and um, this is it now. Partly correct. Uh, This is definitely pay search though. Um, GRP, maybe that. You know? Do you use a TV matrix? Okay. Which of the following matrix direct reflects cost? Uh, cost per click in it. Conversion rate. Okay, sorry. So it's this three actually. Uh, CPC, CPR, CP. Okay, increasing in an email marketing and subscribe rates typically attribute to frequency. Yeah, I hate how you have to do it twice again. It's a bit time wasted to be honest. Okay, on to the third one, cross-channel measurements. Adaptive cross-channel measurement approach that aligns with business gold. Consider your approach. Once you have a sense of matrix available to the question, consider you might determine your cross-channel measurement approach based on Attributes. Attribution helps assign credit to different marketing channels in driving the business goal. Incrementality. This is typically due to underlying flaws in your attribution model. Refine, refine your approaches. In cross-channel measurement attributes, we first.
Nein, ist ja nicht gewonnen. Okay, so, dann ist man auch. Right, so that is then additional resources. Facebook Ads Help Center. And that can be keep as a reference. Yeah, as a reference. So we literally now just finish off uh, the two on hypothesis. Now we're going on to the one of the big ones, which is uh, fourth. Yep, recommend measurement solution. Optimize campaigns with A/B testing. <coughs> okay, testing for campaign optimization. Phase three testing works. Identify when to use A/B testing. Optimize your campaign. The success of your campaign depends on the trend and the treatment of several variables. An A/B test lets you compare tactical approach to variables so you can optimize your campaigns. It's a way to help you and determine which ad tactics uh, produced the best outcome for your campaign based on your key performance indicator. I should create multiple ad sets and test them against each other to see which tactical approach produced the best results. For example, you can test the same ad on two different audiences to see which audience performs better. This can show you which audience respond more to your ad. Or you can test two different forms of creative to determine which is more effective. This can inform what creative directions you take in future ads. We sometimes refer to the practice as raising tactics within the variable. Once we have the result of the test, the race is over. We've determined the winning tactic. So the A-B testing shows the window of confidence level, they won't show the ability to determine the tactic to derive, okay. Marketing strategies at a window would a fashion retailer wants to test the impact on the learn more call to action button uh, compared to a show of you know, both buttons direct the audience to the promotion page on the website but the text differ. With an A-B test, what if you can learn which button is more effective? Yeah, I get you. I get what it means. Correlation, as you might expect, A/B test helps you to assess correlation between different versions of your ads. You can compare the actions of people who see one ad and with people who see another ad. But A/B test results will not relay Caucasians. Tests that relay Caucasians, such as lift test, bear more scientific validation. Success stories. A-B test, A-B tests are ideal for data curious advertisers who want to test best practices, make day-to-day -day tactical decisions and see results based on the last ad contributions. Let's look at a success story for Lola Wells. In which of these scenario would an A-B test be appropriate? Yep, it's that and that. A an A B test needs to run an overlap audience to be effective. Oh no. Which of these hypotheses can A B test prove or disproved? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
more people will click on the shop now, CTA, then I learn more. Identify actionable results. Imagine you have the results of an A-B test in front of you. How would you determine what changes to make to future campaigns? There are several key components to understand how your ad sets performs. Interpret results. After the test, you received an email report with results. You can also review test results directly in Ads Managers. Your two key takeaways are the winning ad set and the confidence level. So in Facebook also provides confidence level, which represents how likely it is that we'll get the same result if you run the test again. For example, you run an A-B test using the creative variable and you test a video against an image. Your result shows that the ad sets with the video with the winning strategy with the 90% audience confident level. This means that the level ad has the lowest cost per result and there's a 90% chance that you run the same test multiple times you get the same result. Okay. Okay, very Interesting, very interesting point. This one I'm gonna note it down. Confident level. So. Receive an email report result. You can review test results directly in Ads Managers. Your two key takeaways are the winning access and common levels. Improve future campaigns. Make sure to review your results and understand which strategy performs best your current. Lucky Shrub, a chain of garden centres, run an A-B test to determine that option, optioning, opting into both a new piece of interest worth better than so is
time is two o'clock. Oh, bad. Measure add effectiveness with the brand lift test. Explain how the brand lift test can help advertisers measure add effectiveness. Effectiveness. Identify scenario in which a brand lift test would be useful. When advertisers run tests to systematically measure the true value of the advertising, they can pro optimize their marketing strategy. Facebook has several solutions to help advertisers understand the impact of the advertising. A brand lift test is one such one solutions. Test is randomly uh, controlled trials RC team that measure how Facebook campaign impacts brand awareness including people perceptions and recall of your brand and products. Because the brand lift test includes a control group it can quantify the impact of your Facebook advertising independent of all your other marketing effects. An advertiser can run the test independently using experiments or a managed test with a Facebook account representative. This course focuses on the managed test. As you can see in the image below, brand lift is a type of experimental method that utilizes a random, randomized control trial methodology. Value for brand lift product can help to imagine light. How does metallic put in the brand? Should the brand do people like to buy our products? It's a bit more like brand oriented can be measured. Impact of your advertising. Uh, measures used to measure brand campaigns can be limited and proxy measurements like clicks, lights and share don't directly align with business outcomes or correlate with brand impacts. For example, clicks might not be an accurate matrix to use because someone who clicks on your ad may not remember your brand or product. Examples, uh, read the following examples of your hypothesis. Advertisers use brand lift test to measure business outcome. Uh, okay. okay, how might a brand lift test help an advertiser? Honestly, usually getting tired after, you know, a couple of readings. If it loads, come on. Oh, my days is crashed. Uh. Clicks to complete when it, nothing is moving. What are we calling it a day here or what is happening? Right, how to do this? Okay. Methodology of brand lift. Uh, 
Explain the method of the brand lift test. Uh, you're an advertiser inter interested in understanding the value of your Facebook advertising on key brand matrix like brand awareness, recall, and perception. Running a brand lift test could be valuable for you. In this lesson, you will learn how Facebook designed brand lift tests to measure key brand matrix at a significant level of accuracy. You'll be able to customize your brand lift test to fit your unique campaigns and use brand lift tests to see insights and make marketing decisions. Brand lift methodology. Uh, Facebook brand lift test uses the gold standard of exper experimental design to measure the impact of advertising on brand awareness. Because this test is relied on experimental design, your choice your chosen audience is randomly divided into test and control groups and then polled about topics such as ad record, brand awareness and message associations. The test calculates the difference in the performance between the test and controls groups, which represents the lift of your Facebook advertising relative to the conditions of your test. By comparing poll results from people who saw your ads in the test group with people who didn't see your art in the control group, you can measure the incremental impact of your campaign. Forty forty hours of delivery take place. Facebook poll of both parties by showing one question at random. Uh, so Advertisers have a unique opportunity to elevate information directly from people across Facebook. As such, questions should be sufficient, aligned with business goals, and easy for people to answer quickly. Uh, Facebook gives you flexibility options to tailor the questions in your test based on your needs and business goals. You can include up to three questions in the test. Each person will see only one of those questions chosen at random. For each poll questions, at least one poll response represents an affirming outcome with respect to the business owed it represents. This response is marked desire in your test configurations. Add to recall questions. Add recall poll questions is required for every advertiser running a brand lift test. If, odd, if often used the most estate statistically significant matrix at the sample sizes Facebook polls, advertisers can create a standard ad recall and unaided ad recall questions. Standard ad recall questions include the advertiser's name in the question itself with yes or no answers choices, while unaided ad recall questions do not include the advertiser's name in the question but rather the answers. Choose one of the options that fits your unique preference the best way to fit your strategy. Example as a standard ad recall question is you have the answer. Upper funnel poll questions. Other question measures than brand, uh, campaign awareness, uh, top of line awareness, unaided brand awareness, middle funnel poll question. Referral for question message, message association, message recall, message agreement, standard favorability, abstract favorability, familiarity, and country and attribute rating. How familiar are you with Philando's name? I know about a lot of your family. Which brand do you associate with men's luxury? Which of the following brands use the phrase men's luxury in the ads? Do you agree or disagree with Philando that is leading men's fashion retailer? Uh, what is your opinion on Philando? What, how would you describe your overall opinions of Philando? How would you rate Philando in terms of quality? Law for no problem. Law for no progression to major actions. Airplanes. Um, equity matrix, you can ask questions to you. Value equity matrix specifically has to relate to affinity, mean, meeting needs, uniqueness and dynamic. Placement of poll questions. A person can see a poll more than once in seven days. 
regardless of the platform. A person can only see a specific call once, whether they answer it or not. Avoid two part questions. Asking more than one concept at a time will produce confusing data like this is how would you rate just the market at the end of the first? <laughs> Only people in a control group can see the answer in pool, Facebook pool, or all the Fernando, this is good to drive in your own Okay, so it's really for that two questions then. Gone a bit all out there. Cool man. Um, Yeah, it's crashed on me again. Well, now I'm talking. Yeah, every time we finish a lesson, you have to, you know, kind of go back. Wait to load. Conversion left. All right, let's call for a break after this. Introduce introduction to conversion lift. Maybe we could do one more if it's a short one because it's about five minutes. Explain the value of conversion lift in helping the business measure ad effectiveness. Identify a scenario in which conversion lift could be useful. Okay. It is important for advertisers to systematically and reliably measure the true value of the advertising to optimize future market strategy. Facebook has several solutions to help advertisers better understand the impact of the advertising. Conversion lift is one such a solution. What's conversion lift? It's a randomized controlled trial that uses test and control groups to measure the number of increment of conversion caused by Facebook ads. An advertiser can run a conversion lift test on a specific Facebook ad campaign or across all its Facebook advertising. It's designed to help you determine the impact of Facebook advertising independent of all your other marketing efforts. It can help answer the questions what additional conversion occurs as a result of my Facebook ads to refer to increment impact. Conversion lift uses data and the three sources to measure conversion Facebook Pixel for online action, Facebook SDK for the in app actions, and offline. Okay, so. Okay. To validate a test hypothesis, once you have identified business goal, prioritize which question you like to answer, develop a test part hypothesis, and identify the variable to test. You can design whether a conversion lift test is the right for you. This conversion left test when you have a test when you have a test hypothesis that can be proven or disproven with existing insights and results. All conversion lift tests help determine the increment impact of your advertising and can also answer questions like which audience has the low cost per increment conversion? How can I choose the best attribute model for my business objectives and reliable experimental data? And how should I balance my prospective and retargeting logic? For example, if you notice the campaign is performing better, conversion lift test cannot help you to understand why and identify what extent to what extent your Facebook ads or other factors are responsible. Okay. To large to inform large scale decision. So a conversion lift is a great um, option when you're looking to design the next step for a bigger business decision based on sales and conversion based outcomes. Unlike small scale decisions that levy leveraged uh, split of testing, all conversion lift results shows the incremental value of a Facebook ads and our statistical confidence that the ads caused incremental conversions. As a result, a lift test can help with better insight into how to adapt an advertising strategy, but it won't be 
uh, to make small tweaks to your campaign to optimize the result as you would be with split testing. Um, to understand full return on ad spends um, of your campaign strategy, sometimes advertising strategy is more focused on understanding incremental impact over the nominal total. The Mm, they might recognize that their chosen attributes model does not tell the whole story of media's impact on business. Um, Lift test lets the advertiser see the true incremental impact of their advertising to determine a winning business strategy. This helps provide a better understanding of the full rots of a com uh, campaign strategy. For example, Akashed is comparing two audience uh, strategies and wants to see how a split test and conversion lift test review different perspectives. His goal is to understand if a proposing audience drives better at home than a retiring audience. He uses a split test to get for results which include indicate strategy A is winning as a result he decides to pursue a strategy that invests more on remarketing. Okay, match the, match the reason for running a conversion test with the corresponding example. I to test whether there are more conversions for prospecting audience than retargeting audience. Mm. Where to allocate my budget across the next few years? To, I want to know, so that will be the last one, which is that. Uh, Definitely that, isn't it? It's um, test hypothesis. Oh, that's a large scale position. Yeah, of course that. Your analysis of the e-commerce business, your test hypothesis is that using automatic. Placement with driving current sales for your business when compared to only Facebook and Instagram placements. You run a conversion lift test to compare sales from Facebook and Instagram versus sales from automatic uh, placements. If results shows nine ten percent confident that you use an automated placement, what should you do next? Uh, you should uh, Oh no, actually, you just expand your placement in the future. Because you're 99% up anyway, so why bothered? Activity complete. Methodology of conversions. Okay. Lift test by by the by the people try. Yeah. Okay.
okay so we've done the conversion lift test as well let's just call a um, break and then and we have three four five six seven eight nine nine more to go but let's call it uh, a break 